What's up everybody, it is your friend Justice West and I am here at the gorgeous Silent Zoo Studios here in Glendale, California. And I wanna walk you through one of my favorite songs that I've released recently called Angel. It's on my EP, Irregular Forms. And I'm just gonna break down the production and little known fact about the song, actually I mixed and mastered it myself. So I'll show, you know, some of my little mix tricks and uh, my Ableton session over here. So let's jump right in. I'm here at Silent Zoo Studios and you have to check this studio out. It's just, and just, it's a gym. It's a gym here in Glendale with a beautiful room. Check out some of this footage of the studio. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous, right? I mean, check out this live room. The pedal setup is incredible. You know, it's just a spot that makes you feel creative and it's clean and well put together. And most importantly, everything in the studio works. I also wanna give a special shout out to my friends at Songo Los Angeles that gave me this amazing shirt I have on. You know, I look good in green, what can I say? And also the pants, which you probably can't see. Shout out to them for helping me with this video. All right, we got the session open. Of course, I'm an Ableton user. I use Live 11. It's my DAW of choice and I make pretty much all my music in it. So let's take a look at this session and some of the stuff in it. And um, I'll show you where I got some of these sounds and how I came up with some of these melodic ideas. So the first really cool sound is the main sound of the whole song. And it sounds like this. So I get asked a lot, like, what the heck is that? And to be totally honest, I'm not sure. Um, I did get it from this contact library by Sony Eczema, I think is the name of their Sony Cinema, because it's like S-O-N-I-X-E-M-A. Um, I can't even remember the name of this patch, but I was using somebody else's computer and I found this sound. And as you can see in the session, I froze it down the audio. So I don't even have the MIDI anymore either or the actual contact instrument. So um, yeah, not much I can do there, but yeah, it's a library by them. I think it's like hybrid scoring orchestra or it's some cool thing, but they make really amazing libraries anyway. So feel free to just like go scroll through all their stuff. But that's where that sound came from. And it was a super inspiring sound. So at the time of writing this song, I was, um, I had just gotten hit to a guy named Moses Sumney. And I thought Moses was like the most amazing artist and I love how he uses falsetto and so I wanted to write a song that kind of emulated him um and the first thing is like you know for a lot of his songs that are like sultry or like this he doesn't use like a huge um rhythmic element and so I thought it would be really cool to play with this whole like let me mute these vocals I thought it would be really cool to play with like what if the pre-chorus is just floating so even when you look at these cinematic drums um here like they're not on the grid at all. So I actually played these in naturally, if you can believe that or not. I just kept playing it until I got like the right timing. And uh, it turned out really cool because in the beginning, you're kind of getting this pacing from this like arpeggiated instrument. And then you get to the pre-chorus and it changes into a whole nother rhythmic flow. And then you get to the chorus and it just opens up into like this really dreamy kind of skate. Um, so I just wanted to like have all these different layers of rhythm um, that I felt like would develop the song in an interesting way. Um, so while we're on the topic, I can bring in the, the main vocal. Where I am supposed to be So I'll say the vocals were cut on an SM7B, um, which at home is kind of a mic of choice. I've actually been experimenting with more mics to figure out which one kind of works best for my voice. But the 7B is obviously like an affordable home option and I use a cloud lifter with it. Um, as you can see, my vocal chain is very simple. Um, shout out to Cradle Audio um, who made this awesome plugin, let me drag it in, called the Spirit. So most of the processing for this lead vocal is actually just the spirit. And you can see my settings here. Um, feel free to steal them for your own songs. That's what this is for. Um, and so you can see it's where I'm supposed to be. You know, I'm just going for a little bit of compression right at the top. 
it's cool because you use this kind of gain rider to you just hit the yellow light and that's basically the proper gain staging a um, little bit of EQ rolled off the low end boosted the highs and then doubler here I really love doubler but I didn't want to use it too heavily but I like the way it kind of makes a lead vocal sit in a mix um, and then from there it was the plate reverb um, which is also built in which is really cool so yeah after that I used this um, awesome deesser by uh, Tech Evasion. Um, shout out to them as well. Um, really awesome folks. And uh, again, where I am supposed to be. A good amount of reduction there. You saw like right at like 6.9 uh, dBs of like deessing gain reduction. And that's kind of where it peaks at. Because um, in the verses, there's a lot of S's. Um, just a little bit of EQ. And then I used a second compressor. Um, I do not work with these folks, but this is a cool compressor by this company called Klangheim. Um, and yeah, like I'm not a mix engineer by trade, obviously. Um, as an indie artist in these days, you know, you need to be multifaceted to be able to get your music out there. And I personally don't have a bag of money to throw at mixing engineers, which is why I even tried to mix this song to begin with. And um, so, yeah, that's kind of vocal processing what's happening. And that's pretty much the same for all the vocals in the song. Um, now I want to jump to like some of my melodic choices. Um, and so... In your dreams where we walk the beach This is what I see Lovely weather so another thing I want to note about this pre-course is I used um, this octave below it. So that's actually a um, doubler by Waves. It's a preset called Dark Fader. Um, Lovely weather ahead. So not much explanation needed there. It sounds sick. Uh, and I've used this a lot. When I have melodies that are kind of in the higher part of my range, I like to, what I call, ground the melody in the mix. Sometimes when it's just like this really high thing that's up in the mix, it really helps to put the lower octave um, below it as well because it just cuts better and it's it makes the higher vocal seem like it has more presence. Um, and it doesn't have to be up very loud. I think what's also cool about this is because it's usually it's using double or four, um, I'll show you these settings. It's actually spreading the low octave as well. So now the low octave just feels and sounds pretty giant, which um, in context sounds like this. No. Oh, not like that. Lovely weather ahead. Not a cloud inside. So another thing I wanted to play with was delay throws. I'm a really big fan of delay throws. Um, and my favorite delay to use in the box, or in the computer per se, is Echo Boy Jr. by Sound Toys. One of my favorite delays. It's got a good vintage tone. You can see I turned up the saturation some because I like the delays to have just a little bit of distortion, a little crispiness to them. Um, and that's what you're hearing on like these end of phrases. So I'm actually singing with the effect on because I'm doing ad libs to react to the effect. Um, and that's how you can really nail it in. Of course, obviously, if you send it to a mix engineer, they can dial stuff in. But I always recommend to sing with the effects and see how that changes your vocal performance. Inside. So like right there, it's just a cool way for that riff to just kind of keep going. Um, another thing I want to jump to is the second pre-course with some of these really dandy harmonies. And I'm, I just want y'all to hear these. Check this out. Lovely weather ahead, not a cloud inside, thoughts of you. So I get asked pretty often like how I can come up with these very weird harmony compositions. And the answer I have is just like experiment. Like 
I literally just try all sorts of different notes and see how they interact and how they stack on top of each other. And you end up with something like that. Now, normally in my sessions, I will stack each note multiple times, but again, to kind of cater to the airiness and the intimacy of this song, you don't want stacks. You want to just use one vocal at a time because then it's like, it's like four people whispering in your ear opposed to like if I did four stacks of each note, that would be like 16 voices, which would sound very group-like. So again, you wanna to play to whatever your intention for the song is. Like I wanted this to be an intimate love song, so we have to vocal arrange and, and kind of arrange the music in a way where each element feels intimate. So that's even why, you know, um, I'm using, you know, not that many strings. That's actually not even strings. That's actually the Oliver Arnold Stratus. Shout out to Spitfire Audio. Those are, they're my fam, my UK fam. I love them to death. Been working with them for a lot of years. And, um, you know, really helped me nail in the ambient. So that was the Oliver Arnold Stratus. And then I also used, um, oh, where is it? Oh, it's only in the courses. The Aperture Cassette Symphony. So this is a newer one that they released. And um, I'm in love with it. First off, I'm in love with just the user interface itself. Um, but also listen to these strings. It has that very Mellotron-like kind of texture to it um, but it's cool because they still give you all these articulations that allow you to like play all sorts of different orchestral parts with just MIDI um, it's a blessing to kind of live in like this technological age um, so shout out to Spitfire Audio and the last thing I want to like put special attention to shout out to my friend Gabrielle Garo who played flute on this song um, oh it just sounds spectacular check this out So what's cool about that is she followed the actual lead melody. And what that does is it created a, a very like interesting texture within the song. Um, I did not tell her what to play. I sent her the song. I said, yo, just play what you feel, homegirl. And this is what she sent back. And it just really kind of adds, again, that very graceful kind of feeling to the courses. Yeah, sounds so good. And then she did this solo at the end that just is spectacular as well. Ah, insane. This last line I love. incredible stuff so yeah obviously there's more elements to the song but i feel like those are some of the most important things to touch on as far as mastering i used a very simple plugin also by cradle audio called the god particle um it's one of their newer plugins super dandy again for us at home creators you know any engineer watching this i'm not a mix engineer but I love using tools that put power into the writer and creative's hands when sometimes we don't have the budget to compensate you guys properly. Um, so I highly recommend the God, God Particle when your music is just getting too quiet. Um, but yeah, that's like all the things I feel like is awesome. Of course, there's Labs by Spitfire. Um, you know, I use some ambient textures from Labs as well. Um, so yeah. I mean, this is one of my favorite tracks I've released in recent times. Um, I'm glad I got to walk through some of it with you. And I hope that you picked up maybe a couple little tricks from looking at my session. And I appreciate you for watching this whole video. Uh, so yeah, peace out. I'm gonna say baby.